my family is my backbone. They're uh, they're the reason I've able I've been able to have somewhat success so far. Um, they've always kept me grounded. They've always supported my dreams since I was a little kid. We grew up in uh, Bloomingdale, Illinois. DuPage County, you know, so by Schomburg, Addison over there. And um, I grew up, my, my mom, my dad, and my sister, Dana, and uh, we just, we had a great family, you know, and, and again, they, I give them all the credit in the world because, you know, I'm seven years old, I have two dreams. I want to play for the Cubs and I want to be the next Michael Jackson. And, you know, I, then I became a high school student and I still wanted to play for the Cubs and be the next Michael Jackson, you know, and then as I'm going into college, it's like, my parents easily could have been like, okay, now it's time for you to get a real job, you know, but I was a, a mobile disc jockey and they let me do that. And I, I, I made pretty good money, but it, I didn't care about the money. It was more about being in the, the music uh, industry. It was more about being in the, in, in, in the party vibe and, and getting people going and stuff, entertainment. And so, you know, then I graduated from college and all of a sudden I, I'm in a, a musical group that's like, you know, touring the world, but I'm still living in my parents' house. So my parents really, really supported my dreams from very, very little. And, and that's the reason I think I've been able to, you know, have success so far. I was groomed very early on to play ball, play ball, and I was a pitcher, a left-handed pitcher. So my whole life, I was really like, I knew what I was going to do. Well, one of two things, music or baseball. But high school, I was uh, in varsity, at Lake, Lake Park High School. I was varsity and uh, I, I won all the awards you could win and stuff like that. But the only thing is, at the end of my senior year, I never got a division one scholarship. And it really broke my heart because I was trained my whole life to do that. You know, I had a bunch of, you know, division two interests and, and D3 grants and stuff like that, but I didn't get a division one scholarship. So in my mind at that point, it was like, all right, I may not be good enough to pitch for the Cubs one day. Like maybe music is the way I should go. And that made my choice for me, really. It was like, okay, I'm, I'm gonna do music full time. I'm gonna be here in Chicago. Instead of going somewhere small and some like, you know, down south Illinois school, I'd rather be in Chicago and pursue music, you know? And, you know, looking back, I've never given up anything in my life, but I, I wish I would have played ball at COD. I wish I would have played ball at Elmhurst College because you never know at that point, you know, maybe I have uh, a great year here and I move over here. So, I mean, that's my one, my one and only regret in life is giving up baseball. But I was, you know, 17, 18, stubborn and, I thought I was a Division One ball player, and uh, you know I didn't get it. I'm a diehard Cubs fan, and I got to sing the seventh inning stretch at, uh, at a Cubs game, Styles and Roman, my radio show. We got to do that; it was awesome. I mean, that was like talk about a dream come true. I'm in the you know the press box that Harry Carey was once in, and you know Len Casper and Bob Brenly at the time, and I got to sing the seventh inning stretch. I have season tickets for the Cubs, so like that's like a dream of, of anybody's, you know. But then a year later, I also got to throw out the first pitch. So I did two things that I mean, I I, I always wanted to pitch from the Wrigley Field mound, and I even though I didn't make it to the Cubs, I. Still Still got to do that, which is pretty cool, and that was a great, great moment in my life. In elementary school, I was a straight A student, honor student, and everything. And I'll never forget my mom at like fifth grade told me, like, listen, I'm so proud of you. Your grades are phenomenal, but I'd rather you be, you know, a B student with a great social life and a lot of friends and 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 enjoying life than a straight A student and just, you know, to yourself studying books. So I'll never forget that because then junior high comes around, high school comes around, and I did everything. I was I was in all the good classes, you know. I didn't get straight A's, but I definitely got straight B's or B pluses, whatever. And um, but I played baseball, basketball, football. I went to all the parties. I DJed on the weekends. So you know, I did it all. And I think that was some very good advice. You know, I know a lot of parents are always like, report cards are so important and straight A's, straight A's. But at the end of the day, I got my associates from COD. I graduated from Elmhurst College, and nobody cares about my GPA. I did it. When I was heartbroken and I didn't get my Division One scholarship for baseball, now I'm like, okay, where am I going to go to school? So I knew I wanted to do music business, and so I was doing a lot of research on what schools offered that program. And uh, University of Memphis was the the school that I decided on. I, I loved I loved down south. Um, I thought it was cool. They had I, I, I talked to the baseball coach. I was going to try to walk on that baseball team, um, so I was all ready to go. And uh, a week before I was supposed to go to University of Memphis, I chickened out. I'm a mama's boy, I'm a, you know, my dad's my best friend, you know, I love my sister, so I just, all of a sudden, I'll never forget, I was at, on the corner of Lake Street and, uh, I'm sorry, on the corner of Bloomingdale and Army Shaw Road, there was a Baker Square back then, and I was eating with my friends, and it was like a week before I was supposed to leave, and I just was like, I don't want to leave here, I don't, I don't want to leave and go somewhere I don't know anybody, and I don't want to leave this area, and, and so I told my parents, of course they were thrilled, because they don't want me to leave, so um, I got rid of Memphis. Well, now, what do I do? So. COD was 
the best choice I could have made because, you know, I didn't know what I wanted to do, where I wanted to go. So instead of wasting time, instead of, you know, taking a year off, I got to go to COD, get all my gen eds out the way. I got to, uh, you know, get my associates from there. And it bought me about two years to figure out where I wanted to go and what I wanted to do. So COD was, was great for that. Plus, save my parents money, you know, it was, it was, it was great. And then in those two years, I, I decided between uh, DePaul and Elmer's College. And being the mama's boy that I am, I decided to go to Elmer's College because it was closer, I could commute, and I'd have amazing meals and my laundry done and all that stuff. But when I was in junior high, uh, I went to Westfield Middle School, which was in Bloomingdale. And the school dances, we had a company called m and Music, and this guy named Mike Terry, who I will give credit for starting my entire career off. He doesn't get enough credit, but he was the one because I saw what he was doing at our school dances and I really, really wanted to do that. I really wanted to uh, be up on stage. I wanted to be the guy with the microphone. Like, I didn't really know what I wanted. I wasn't a singer back then. I, I wasn't really a rapper. I wrote like poetry when I was a kid. So I wasn't really, I didn't know what I could do musically, but I wanted to be the center of attention and I wanted to be the guy with the microphone. So I'll never forget, I hit him up and I was like, yo, me and two of my friends want to perform at our school dance. And he's like, he looked at me, he's like, well, what are you going to do? And so I kind of told him. And so sure enough, he gave us a chance. We performed at one of our school eighth grade graduation dances like a really old song but the girls went crazy it was really really cool and i and he looked at it like all right good job get off the stage congratulations but i looked at it as, as like no i want to do this more and more and more so he gave me his business card and he will tell you that i stalked him until he finally called me back because i really wanted to work for him i wanted to do school dances i wanted to do weddings i wanted to do all that stuff and um so i, I called over and over again i stalked this poor guy finally he called me back because i think he was annoyed and figured he'll call me back and i'll stop calling again he uh, gave me a shot to be like his DJ helper, if you will. And um, from that point on, I was a DJ, a mobile disc jockey, doing school dances and weddings and stuff like that. Well, during these dances, I, you know, grab the microphone and maybe sing along to some of the songs. And I noticed like people would be interested and girls would scream and all these kind of things. And I love that. And he saw it too. And he's like, you should put a group together because like you have, you, get, you got a good voice, you have good stage presence and people seem to like you. So he really encouraged me to like get into a group. And I grabbed two guys, uh, two dancers, like local dancers. And uh, Michael Terry gave us a great chance to perform at a bunch of different uh, festivals, like the Glendale Heights Fest, the Bloomingdale Fest, like uh, different festivals and stuff. And we would perform, that was my first group, and we performed and we then had printed out pictures because people were going crazy and we would sign autographs and take pictures. And that was my first taste of, of what I'm doing now and I loved it. B96 DJ, like even though I don't DJ like that anymore, like talking on the microphone, awesome, I love it. I love being the voice of Chicago. But I also love making music, I love writing songs, I love performing in front of audiences. Um, so I really can't pick, you know, it's one of those things like, if you're comparing what's better, your radio career or your music career, uh, it's like asking you who's your favorite kid. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't pick, you know, oh yeah, my son's better. Like I love both things and they both have, um, they both have brought me a lot of happiness in life and you know i don't think i'd be happy doing just radio or just music i think both have really fed my creative juices a little bit with my musical group jump smokers right now i'm on tour with pitbull and kesha we are it's really cool we're, we're, we're on the north american tour uh traveling all over the place i just got it on sunday from atlantic city we had uh, shows in boston spring from massachusetts two shows in atlantic city i leave again friday for new york new jersey pittsburgh we're on the nationwide tour after kesha my group goes on then pitbull goes on it's amazing it's like been the best best experience of my life but it makes for a lot of early morning flights because I, my off days i got to be here in chicago to be on the radio b96 so where do i find time i i don't know i make it happen and someone Someone's like, well, are you ever going to choose? And I'm like, no, I'm going to do both until I physically can't do both ever again. You know, so uh, I figure, you know, why should I choose right now when, I, when I've ha I have great bosses here at B96 that they see my group and performing with Pitbull and Kesha as a, a really good avenue. So for them to have a jock that's on tour with two of the biggest pop stars right now, that's a good look for B96, you know. And that being said, my Jump Smokers group, um, a lot of radio contacts I've met through B96, it helps me with my group. So they're, they're almost married in a sense and they, they, they work very well together. The advice I give to anybody, I speak all over um, Chicago and, and from kids to, you know, to young executives. And the one thing that I'll say that I don't care what you go into, music, sports, uh, medical, uh, law, whatever it is you go into, here's the best advice I can give somebody is never give up because persistence pays off and people that quit are never going to make it. But 
uh, the people that keep going and you, if you, you'll get knocked down, you'll get knocked down. Your people say, no, you can't do that. No, you can't pitch for the Cubs. No, you can't be the next Michael Jackson. But like the people that don't believe that and follow your dreams, those are the people that are going to succeed. And you're going to, in life, you're going to hear a thousand no's. Like people are going to tell you no, 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 no. But one yes will change your entire life. And I'm living proof of that. So, you know, no matter what you're going to go into, just never give up. Because if you want something bad enough, you can achieve it for sure.